the Sycamores of Indiana State unbeaten in 32 outings going against the Blue Demons of DePaul. It's Ray Meyer against Will Hodges. Let's take a look at the matchups, the players. There's more at stake here than just Larry Bird against a five-man starting unit from Chicago. By just getting to the Final Four, DePaul coach Ray Meyer has already realized one dream. Now he'll count on five very good starters who often go all the way to get him the rest of the way. For openers, there's freshman Mark McGuire. 6'8", 235 pounds. When he takes that bulk inside, he often gets his way. And in a pair of guards, Meyer has great quickness on the floor. Watch right here with a steal. Gary Garland with the fast break bucket, Clyde Bradshaw. Bradshaw is just a sophomore, but he plays with tremendous poise. He's got that left-handed jumper, gives Meyer great outside firepower, certainly enough to break down any zone. But when the Blue Demons need a clutch basket, they often turn to their senior, their captain on the floor, Gary Garland. That man right there provides the clutch points. In the middle, they've got an unheralded Iron Man in James Mitchum. Mitchum, not spectacular, just does not make a lot of mistakes. Another man who's been nursing a sore knee, the other forward, Curtis Watkins, who runs with the best of them. DePaul, they go with five starters all year long. It has been enough, but will it be enough today to go against the Indiana State Sycamores? We're still trying to make believers of a lot of people, including our Billy Packer. It is the Larry Bird show that the Indiana State Sycamores count on, and what a show it is. Larry Bird, Mr. Inside, can also take it outside, never forces a shot. Watch what happens when he follows up his own. Among the leading rebounders in the country, when there's people on him, he'll find the open man. He's deadly with his passes. Give him the outside. His range is no range. He just peels it back and puts it up, off an all net. And Bill Hodges has some other people that he can count on coming off the bench. For openers, he's got a slick guard, a junior guard in Carl Nix. 6'2 is Nix, and a brave one he is. He'll go among the Giants inside. He plays with poise. He's the quickness man out front. Watch him right here. Jumps with the best of them. Very deceptive. Just 6'2", but can put it up. Outside shooting strength. The Sycamores can count on a lot of people. They don't go deep, but everybody does their job. How about this man, number 23, Steve Reed. Can't find an open man. Puts it up himself. And you've got to wonder if the Sycamores are not indeed Destiny's Darlings this year. Witness this last second shot by Bob Heaton, which won them the title of the Mideast Regional. The Indiana State Sycamores, 32-0, and still trying to make believers of a lot of people. Indiana State versus DePaul. What are the keys for those answers? Let's go over to Dick Enberg, Al McGuire, and Billy Packer. All right, gentlemen, let's boil it down to its simplest terms. Coach, how does DePaul win? It must create turnovers. They got to stay out of foul trouble. They got to stop Knicks. And Curtis Watson has got to play 100% healthy. Stop Knicks and not Bird. How does Indiana State win? Well, I think they got to be able to penetrate the guards offensively, make sure that Larry Bird gets the ball offensively, and get great play out of Heaton and Staley coming off the bench. They've been great in the playoffs. The beauty and majesty of the mountains surrounding Salt Lake City. It's in the high 50s. Outside, inside, temperatures are rising. People are burning up. They can't wait. DePaul and Indiana State are heading for a showdown. A couple of moments ago, Dick Enberg had a chance to talk with DePaul coach Ray Meyer. He's got a word about another very special coach right now. Dick? That's right. There's more than one sentimental choice in this game we're about to see. Just as many fans will be rooting for Ray Meyer at a late age to win a national championship, so it is for the fans of Indiana State because the coach today is on the sidelines and a young man has taken his place, but he still is part of the Sycamore coaching staff. With well, that story, here's Billy Packer. Thanks an awful lot, Dick. And, of course, we have Bob King with us, the man that really brought the sports program to Indiana State University. Bob, you had a goal in mind, but did you ever dream it would come true so quickly? Well, uh, this is a little bit, a little sooner than we had in mind. I, uh, but we have some fine young men, fine coaching staff, and I'm awful proud of both of them, both groups. You know, you put together the basketball team and the coaching staff. We've all been amazed at the tremendous job that Bill Hodges has done on the and bench. He done and super. He's been fantastic. And, of course, I think you deserve a lot of credit for that. You molded him, and he gives you credit for it. Well, he came there when I took over the basketball situation, and he's just a super young man that uh, knows the game, knows how to work with kids, and, and just great. I, I, well, I'm so proud of him, and... Uh, well, the rest of our coaching staff, uh, a couple of them well, played Mel, Mel Daniels, Mel Daniels played, played for you and been such a big and, part of this program right. for you right here. Danny King played for me. Exactly. One of the things, we're just watching some drills that they used out there. These are drills that you put in when you were coaching and they're still right. following them. Well, I, I think it's real good to loosen them up defensively as well as offensively before a ball game. And uh, 
We've used those drills for about all oh, three years now, and we like them. Well, we're so proud of your team, so proud that you can be out here and recovering so well. Best of luck to you and your program. Thanks for bringing college basketball to Indiana State University. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dick. Okay, Billy Packer, thank you very much. For those of you who may not know, Bob King was forced to the sidelines by a heart attack and brain surgery. Hopefully he's on the road to recovery, and the Indiana State Sycamores have dedicated this title chase to him. If that sounds corny in this day and age, that's too bad, because that's the way it is. For the right to meet the Michigan State Spartans in the final, it's the Sycamores against the Blue Demons. For the player introductions, let's go to our PA announcer, Dan Roberts. Ladies and gentlemen, this afternoon's second game is between the Blue Demons of DePaul University, champion of the West Regional, and the Sycamores of Indiana State University, champion of the Midwest Regional. And now for the starting lineup. For DePaul, wearing number 32 forward, 6'7", freshman from Chicago, Illinois, Mark Aguirre. For Indiana State, wearing number 40, at forward, 6'8", junior from Rockville, Indiana, Brad Miley. For DePaul, wearing number 30, at forward, 6'6", senior from Harvey, Illinois, Curtis Watkins. For Indiana State, wearing number 42, at forward, 6'7", junior from East St. Louis, Illinois, Alex Gilbert. For DePaul, wearing number 11, at center, 6'9", junior from Albuquerque, New Mexico, James Mitchum. For Indiana State, number 33 at center, 6'9", senior from Fresh Lake, Indiana, Larry Bird. For DePaul, wearing number 24 at guard, 6'5", senior from East Orange, New Jersey, Gary Garland. For Indiana State, number 23 at guard, 6'2", sophomore from Warsaw, Indiana, Steve Reed. For DePaul. Number 15 at guard, six foot sophomore from East Orange, New Jersey, Clyde Bradshaw. And for Indiana State, number 22 at guard, 6'2 junior from Chicago, Illinois, Carl Nix. A big welcome, please, to the Blue Demons head coach, Ray Meyer. And a welcome to the head coach of Indiana State, Bill Hodges. Ready to go. The three-man officiating team headed by referee Henry Nichols, Gary Muncy, and Lenny Wirtz, the umpires. Indiana State and White. Bird will not jump center. It'll be Gilbert. And a ball in blue. Mitchum will leap for the Blue Demons. Control by Indiana State. Nix. That was a design play. And the Sycamores jump off to the early lead. Larry Bird never even caught the ball, just tapped it right in midair. Watkins on that bad left knee. Mitchum and Bird. Bradshaw. Garland, he's their money shooter. And although Mitchum's listed as center, he's playing outside to keep Bird away from the board. Aguirre inside. Just starting to post up uh, uh, Aguirre. He has more physical strength than Miley. Here he goes. There he is. Oh! by Gilbert. <laughs> Alex Gilbert, six, seven and a half. And he almost came to lights with that one. Well, they ought to sort of tip Aguirre off on something. Anytime he beats Smiley, he's gonna have him to handle. Anytime Gilbert comes over, he's got a dish. Curtis Watkins, bad knee and all, ties it up for DePaul. Dick, here's the key to the game. How is Reed gonna be able to do bringing that ball up the court? Reed against Bradshaw. Watkins and Burns. Off the glass, but that's something they're going to have to be patient with. Larry Bird's going to make that shot all day anyhow. they got to just make sure that the other players don't get any action. That's what Ray Meyer said. He's going to let Bird have his point, try to stop the other four. Garland, 25-footer. It's tied at four. Music man is starting to play early in the game. He's deceptive, a lot bigger, about six foot four and a half. Watch, he places his hands down by his side. Watch how he steals the ball. Nick. Bird open, tough yeah. hand. Through the hands of Bird, Nick's doing a bit too hard. Bradshaw, great speed, all the way. The ball leads for the first time. 
tried to glide. And they start putting this pressure on a little heavier. It looks like Bradshaw is trying to give Reed some room to operate. Now they got him. Double team. And there's Watkins setting up Garland. And it scores. No basket. No basket. A foul before the shot. It'll be a foul on Nick. He really showed some super speed there. This is Ray Meyer cheering the DePaul Blue Demons. There goes Bradshaw through. He had already beaten Reed. Miley, normally a real solid defensive player, let him go by, didn't get the shoulder over. Great shot by Brad. Well, that, that's an effort by a call, Nick. Oh, it sure was. And Save the best play. And just a common foul. No basket, no free throw. DePaul plays it from the side. Throws it in the backcourt. That's not a backcourt violation. Well, yeah, what he called? Five seconds. He called five seconds on the throw, and it would not have been a backcourt situation. Nobody touched the ball. It was the right ball. Right. I think it was touched. Was it touched? That's what Hank Nichols are arguing about right now, that the ball was touched. Well, if it was touched, then the clock automatically stopped. You know, the five-second clock. That's right. The five-second clock wouldn't have been a factor out there. They're going to correct the error, it looks like. Good officials. I love this when officials do this. Right. That was Hank Nichols stepping in there, letting words that is my mistake. Corrected it. Going the other way. That seemed the right call when you added it all up. That seemed to be the fairest call. Well, no, not if someone didn't touch it. A five-second count goes if someone touches the ball on either team. In ball leading, six to four. Garland. The ball comes out with a hot hand. Garland has his second bucket. Eight to four. Two and a half minutes play. You notice they're clearing out, letting Larry Bird bring up the ball, which really takes away a some of his other part of the game. Nick down the bottom of the hole, eight to six. Carl Nick has four. That was big for the Sycamores. They had to get him out of the gate fast. I say one way to fall to win this ball game, they have to cut Nick off. Garland, oh, three in a row for Gary Garland, the music man, and that's beyond the defense. I don't really want to play a guy out there. This is Meyer there. They have 14 grandchildren. The 15th one is on the way. But Bradshaw is just eye and read up coming down that court. Bird playing the baseline now, trying to take Watkins inside. Great pass. Oh, and that's up by Alex Gilbert. Foul against the ball. He went to two levels, and he got to one level, then went higher. And here's again, when you try to double-team Larry Bird, coming over right there, he sees it, feels it, hits it into Gilbert, and there's that second level you talked about, Al. He left that thing, but outside the lane. Bird with the assist, an unselfish star, Bird. They call Gilbert Super J, or Super Jump. That's why I think Ray Meyer's idea of not trying to go over and help out on Bird is the only way to play him, because he'll hit the open man every time. Gilbert, free throw miseries continue. He's hitting only 27% on the year. 10-8, DePaul with the ball, and the lead. Three and a half minutes gone. Michigan State has beaten 10. Garland, oh. four in a row. Hey, he's Gary doing, Garland. He's doing it against a great athlete. Carl Nick is a great athlete. He leads the team in assist and in steal. They call him the music man because his mother and his aunt, Dionne Warwick, of course, outstanding stars musically. Nick hits again. Foul on Mitchum to fall underneath. Basket is good. And yes, good. Foul on Mitchum, his second. Now, Carl Nick is getting out of that gate pretty good, too. There's Bill Hodgson, the guy that's had a great year. Certainly deserve being named coach of the year, what he's been able to do for the second one. Carl Nick is the son of a preacher man in Chicago. Baptist minister. Little zone out of bounds. I'd like to get back to the Indiana State looking for a four point play. Bird gets it. Gary Burns ties it at 12. He has good control of his body, Billy, and he just stays in the air. He seems to fight for position all the time. Right, he gets excellent position, and you really have to keep him off the offensive board. Watkins, and Mitchum has it knocked away by Reed. He wasn't sure that was going to be a backcourt violation. Aguirre, 12 footer for the freshman. Watkins, boy, he really leaves high on that one. Foul against Aguirre to Paul. 
Squire tried to pump fake a couple of times there. Watkins looked pretty good on the leg. Good pass by Nix inside. Bird grabbed this. When you see his left thumb still give him a little trouble. Now here's that offensive positioning you're talking about, Al. Totally in control of his body. Puts it back up with the left hand. The ball's coming out with slight pressure man to man. Number 31 has been placed. Miley, Miley will give it up. He really doesn't want to handle the ball. But Nick Stent. Oh! Oh! oh Bird! Oh! And Gilbert had it knocked away by Mitchum, but what a pass by Larry Bird. And Gilbert grabbed the rim and got away with it. It's still shaking up there. Tied at 12. Aguirre off the mark. Gilbert high for the rebound. Squire's going to find that Miley's a good defensive player. He's forcing some shots right now. Out of that. Travel, far sideline. Turnover to Paul. As number 30, Bob Heaton comes in. There you go, Larry Bird coming in. Throwing it back with his left hand. I think we ought to point it. There's a super steal in there by Garland. I'm going to point out, Dick, that he is a left-handed individual, except when it comes to shooting that ball. And as a right-handed baseball pitcher, we'll be back. Tied at 12. Indiana State trying to paint its way into the finals against Michigan State. Meanwhile, Curtis Watkins, the DePaul University's all-time top-scoring forward, appears to be working rather well on that bad knee. What do you think, Coach? Yes, yeah, so far he's working fine. He started off man-to-man -man on Larry Bird. DePaul's mixed up with zones. Um, I, I think he's going to the 100%. We've got to worry about the start of the second half when he sits down for 20 minutes. Gary Garland's first miss. Bird with a rebound. Don't forget, Larry Bird, a great shooter, but he is also in the top five in the nation in rebounding. Still man to man, but they're backing it in now. They're allowing Nix to handle the ball a little bit. Bird. That's his game. Right to men. He's probably the best that ever played at the game from that distance at his height. Bird has given Indiana State the lead. He has six points. He's backing away from Mitchum. Oh, my, James Mitchum. He hit those shots against UCLA. Well, he wants that shot. Ray Myers wants him to take that shot. That really makes it tough on Bird because he has to play so far away from the back. Miley to Bird. Over Watkins. He knew that was going in. He was fading back on defense as soon as it left his hand. Perfect form. He shoots a lot like Rick Barry. Look at Aguirre. Out of bounds. Out of Aguirre's hands to Indiana State. That's a great defensive play by Bird. We'll see his form on a jumper. Here's what you're talking about, Al. He pushes him back in with a good ball fake. Solid fundamentally. Holds the ball above his head. Great release. Excellent rotation on the ball. The guy's incredible. He gets super balance on his jump shot, Billy. He jumps straight up or maybe a little bit back. Right. He's Very... always squared up to the basket. That's up. Our statistician has Bird with eight and Garland with eight. And this, this came quite in contrast to the first game. And a frenetic pace. Both sides. Short of Staley. Rebound Mitchell. Well, Staley and Heaton are both in the game. They may be better athletes than the guys that start. McGuire wants two. Can't get it. He's missed three in a row. Bird with another rebound. Mark McGuire's pushing a little bit. That's a sign of refreshment. He needs his first pass, but then he'll set him down. Indiana State 16 to Paul 14. Oh, oh. oh. And it's against Bird, charging Bird. I like the call. What do you say, Billy? Well, that's a call. It's a that in my mind, I think it was a call on the defense. Watch him right here. He puts him up. He puts uh, you're say watch he him put his shoulder in, Billy. Watch. Okay, watch him. There he goes. There he goes into him with oh, his shoulder. Oh, no, he got position there. The man came down on him. Oh, eat some carrots, will you, your eyesight. <laughs> <laughs> I call it a double foul. No, no. I, that's, a, that's a good play that he has there. I don't think he gained an advantage. That's a tough call. Bradshaw. Garland trying to tie it up. Oh, oh, was that a line drive kiss? What a low trajectory on that shot. He played it off the backboard. The only way he could go in. We played seven minutes, and they're even at 16. Got nobody has it in this game. Larry Bird inside, and Bird controlling the game offensively. That Came around a low pick that time, Dick. Three on the left side. Simple layup. As a set play, and he... He often does that, coming off that screen. Garland and Bird matching point for point, each with 10. Watkins, he likes that baseline. Rebound Staley. But Dickey came down on one leg that time, if you'll notice. 
He didn't have full balance. Sycamore is lead by two. He's got to post it up underneath there. Watkins is too small. The bird's going to post them up. They're going to force the ball into a zone. Oh, bad pass. Turnover. Garland sets up Bradshaw. Oh! Bradshaw misses an easy two. He dropped his head. He didn't know whether to dunk the ball or play it off the glass. Yeah, sometimes the dunk is a, is a problem child for the coach, isn't it? Traveling Bird. That was def definitely steps on Larry Bird. He had his mind made up to take it inside. Now, here he goes. He's got the screen right there. Staley is just staying in place. Set play coming off the low double post. Mike, uh, Mark of Wire fell asleep on that. He should have picked up uh, Larry Bird. Watkins was caught on the pick. Ray Meyer looking for that miracle. Meyer getting inside now. There he is. He's got his first two, 18-18, of Wire's first bucket. As a smart play, he was taking a shot from outside, forced a little bit, finally posted up low. He's six foot seven, but with the size of his rear end, he plays about 6'10", if he gets down on his back. Reed. Bird. Oh, what a shot. Does he ever miss? Hey. What was so great about that? He took it right off the pass. He was on his way up as he caught the ball. You don't defense that. I don't think he gave it a high percentage of that shot. Now, that's a tough <laughs> shot. Wow. Watkins. And a foul against Watkins, who moved quickly. He had that good first step, but committed the foul. And we talk about Bird on offense, but watch him defensively here. He drops down in. See, instead of going out with this man, he dropped down in and helped out, and they got good weak side defense. This is a solid team defensive ball club. Both well coached. A lot of people around the nation have heard, read about Larry Bird, seeing him for the first time, and how quickly he makes believers. There he goes. Lays it off to Nix. Oh. Blocked by Aguirre, and Aguirre gets a foul. Nix tried to do a double jackknife that time, hung up there, picked up the foul. You know, one of the things I think is helping Nick in this ball game, he's played against a lot of these Chicago kids. So there's a, it's not like being against people he's never seen before. Nick at the line. He's made a big difference in this club. He transferred out of Indiana State after his freshman year, went to Gulf Coast, Florida Community College, and now back with the Sycamores, much improved. You know, Dick Bob King told me that he promised uh, Carl's mother and father that he would get a diploma and they felt it was in his best interest to go away from junior college even though it hurt their basketball team which I think is a real credit to their program. You know it's a problem Carl's mother and father couldn't come to the game because of the price of the plane ticket. That's Indiana State's biggest lead four. DePaul is also led by four. They're approaching the midpoint and there's a blocking foul on Staley 44 of Indiana State. Use the knees. The more you see Gary Garland, the more you appreciate him. You know, Aguirre, watching him in practice yesterday, he really doesn't like to practice. <laughs> you know, he's one of those guys, Al, that you'd have had a hard time with, you know, especially being a freshman. I bet you the four kids' ears would be off. I never had a hard time with, it, with a ball player. They always had hard times with me. <laughs> he's getting positioned down there, using his bulk now. Garland, way outside. Not there, and that was Bird who tipped it into the corner. Reed. Nix. That's blocked. Way off the mark. Aguirre, Garland. Oh, oh beautiful. beautiful. Beautiful passing. Mitchum gets the bucket. Don't you love to see that kind of teamwork? Team play. You know, Mitchum really beat UCLA because I don't think he can hit that good from the outside. But he's out of the gate fast again in this time. He scored four points already from the outside. A real, key to, a real key to me early in the game is the fact that Steve Reed's been able to get the ball up court rather easier. Nix traveled, and at the halfway mark, 9.58 left in the first half, Indiana State leads by a basket, and we have a timeout. There's that beautiful dump off right inside. Bradshaw over to Mitchum, little fake, and there's the shot you're talking about, Al, but it looks like he has confidence in it. And DePaul will have the ball when we return, needing a basket to tie. They're already 
giving the Yankees the American League pennant, but Milwaukee, Boston, and others say, just wait and see. First game, Brewers at New York, and the Phils will play in St. Louis. You'll see Pete Rose in a Philly uniform for the first time. That's a couple of weeks away the start of our coverage of Major League Baseball. Inside, Aguirre. Bradshaw. Rebound to Gilbert. 22-20. Indiana State with the ball and the lead. 9.30 remaining in this first half. Zone defense, Dick. It was Bradshaw who made the steal and then forced the foul off Nick. During that timeout, of course, uh, Ray Myers changing his defense out, going to his zone for first time in the out of bounds situation. Nick goes out, and Bob Heath, number 30, who has been the star in a couple of big Indiana State wins this year, is in. it was Heath who made the little left-hander to beat Arkansas, and he also made a 50-footer against New Mexico State to send that game in overtime in Las Cruces, and Indiana State eventually won. Uh, Larry Bird fouled out of that game before the end of the half. Bradshaw dumping to Garland. Jerry Garland ties it up at 22. He has a dozen. Boy, he's hitting them, but those are long shots out there, and you have to feel that they've got to get their inside game going strong. Well, we've got a tie with nine minutes to go. Still in the zone. Two, three zone. Bob Heath off the mark. Followed in by Alex Gilbert, and Bird kept it alive. Mainly and Gilbert do all their scoring from three feet around the basket. Mitchum. Oh, he hits again. Now, Heaton and Mitchum were teammates at Denver for two years. Their coach, Al Harton, is here. The Denver de-emphasizing his program. Those were his kids. He said, what a unique position. I've got one of my former players with the ball, the other with Indiana State. I can't lose. And Ray Meyer goes back to man to man. Heaton missed third that time. He has position. Deflected by Bradshaw. Pass back to Bradshaw. Oh. And the foul on Bradshaw. Reed got back to shut him off. Steve Reed got there in time. Got a position. Now Bradshaw should have pulled up on that one because he had some people coming down in the lane. Pretty hard with that speed. Look how fast it's going. Yeah, well, here's Reed right here coming down in position. Draws the charge. He really didn't have the lane. I agree with Al McGuire, though, once again. That should be just a ball out of bounds and not a foul to the man who charged. Maybe it would discourage some of that, that kind of defense to fall down defense. Tied at 24, turned over. Garland again, the man on the spot, the demon. He tried to loop the ball into Gilbert that time. Well, they're getting a good screen. Foul on 30, Heat was not a shot. Here's Joe a Hodges, case with a set 36 now. years of age, coach of the year in almost every balloting at the end of this season. He was the best man at Rick Mount's wedding. At, at his wedding, Rick Mount was the best man. They both come from Lebanon. Don't forget, gentlemen, most valuable player at school receives $1,000 from Gillette Racer Company. We'll announce that later in the game. Aguirre rattles one in to give DePaul the lead, 26-24. Wire is averaging 24 points a game. Time to get the ball, ball to Larry. There he is, and there it is. Larry Bird ties it at 26. He has 14. Did you notice how when he came down, he headed right in for the offensive rebound. Thought it was off a little bit. He's really a terrific young guy. Watkins, quick move and scores. Curtis Watkins playing on that sore knee gives the ball the two-point lead. It's a two fine college basketball teams we're looking at right now. They play it all the game very well. Oh, hey. Hey. Great assist by Reed, and it's tied at 28. Just a touch pass by Bird. Reed to Bird, Gilbert. And those two pros will do all this scoring again within three feet of the basket. Gilbert and Milo. Aguirre, Mitchum, and Bradshaw. 
Mitchum over Bird. He has had three in a row. He's made me a believer. I knocked his outside shooting the first game. I apologize to the whole United States. <laughs> It's not that big a deal. Well, he's like from Albuquerque, New Mexico, too. Holding on Bird, turnover to DePaul. Bird walking. Ray Meyer wants a timeout. I don't know why. It looks like he's in pretty good shape. Now he wanted a technical foul. Oh, technical. What happened here? Bird threw the ball down. But uh, it was just a pass to the referee. Here he goes. Pump fake. Steps in. Now watch him go for the rebound. Oh, we missed him a little bit there. But he, there he is, right under the basket. That's a good point, Tony. He is a complete player. He's not just a shooter. Garland misses on his knifing attempt through that defense. And here comes Indiana State trailing by two. He's the weak side guard. He cuts off the high pivot. He was free. That's two. You're right. Larry Bird, All-American. Well, if you're Ray Meyer sitting over there, Al, you got to start saying to yourself, hey, we're going to have to deny him the pass. Move him out a little further, because he's getting out there and touching it from 18 feet. Well, the game's going good. I don't think anyone's going to make any major changes right now. It's 30-30, and there's 5 minutes and 30 seconds left. Right there, 30. Yep. Ball on he too much hands on the cut from the weak side by uh, Gary Garland going to the strong side of the court. Whatever side the ball's on is called the strong side of the court. You run a string from one basket to the other. Interesting point, and it reflects what kind of game this is, gentlemen. The game has been tied 11 times already. It's tied now at 30. There's Larry Bird again, stepping out, helping out on defense. Mark looking for that post position. Nice throw by Mitchum, but Bird was there. Good defense, man to man by Indiana State. Aguirre. 30 to Paul. 30 to Paul. He was on my team in two uh, high school games this year that were played in New England in May. He really made me a good coach. Back to the zone again. They're trying to figure out some way to slow Bird down. Nicks deflected out of bounds by Aguirre. And again, the quickness of the DePaul defense. Timeout. Beautiful special event center on the campus of the University of Utah. And we've got a beautiful game. Inside, Staley. Bird tips it in. He's everywhere. You can't leave him. I, he's getting too open in this ball game. You better just glue yourself to it. 18 for Bird already, and the game is tied for the 12th time. Bradshaw follows it in. Good rebound. Still fly Bradshaw inside to give the ball a 34-32 lead. The ball sitting in the 2-3 zone. Reed's first shot is there. Well, they give him room, and Steve Reed connects. He can fill it up. He sacrifices himself for the team. You know what the good thing about all the Indiana State University players is that they don't try to do more than they're capable of. Aguirre to walk in fine interior passing. And Bird looking for the foul. That's a good no call. He jumped in a little late. 36-34, DePaul with three and a half minutes left for his half. Look at that zone. It's really shaded over on Bird's side now. Six. Aguirre. Stolen. And then taken away. Watkins held his ground. Hot potato. Ray Meyer checks the clock. 3.18 left. First half. Boy, Aguirre sets a big screen up there in that foul line. Guys come off of him like a tank. Garland has to knock away. Watkins picks up the loose ball. He is lightning. Important to get it to Larry Bird now. This time down to court. Watch how the zone is shifting over. See, they're even saying. He's on your side. Get over there. Four points. The ball lead. 2.45 left. They'll look for Bird this time. That's not too far out there. It's unbelievable. His range. Reed. Woo! Steve Reed. Big shot. He's the quarterback of the team. One of the only four players out there directly out of high school. Two at junior college and two at transfer. Indiana State. 
pass and a holding foul against Staley, 44 of Indiana State. Staley's second foul, one and one in effect for DePaul. Here we see Watkins on the outside. Ball kind of got away from everybody. Look at him hang time in the air, laid it up beautiful. Notice how he favors his left leg, Billy, coming down. Right. Lands completely on his right. He did that on his jumper also. Yeah, an injury stays in your head longer than it stays in your body. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think it definitely does. He was dragging that leg yesterday. First free throw, and he misses the front end of one and one. Indiana State, a chance to tie. Third. Oh, what a touch. Oh, danced it on the rim and dropped it in. We're even at 38. Bird has 20 points. Yep. He anticipated the block and just put it up a little bit higher. What a touch. That ball landed so soft, like a butterfly landing on soft feet. Good defense by Nick. 14 times this game has been tied. Each team has pulled ahead by only four, their biggest margin. Either one of these clubs would be a great representative in the final. Here's that zone. It's going with a little more. Now it's a 2-1-2. Two, two. Nicks inside. Nice pass on 40. Brad Miley has his first bucket. Neither team can figure out the secret to stop the other. Watkins got away with oh, the he and scores. He walked. A well, terrific shot off balance there. 40 to 40. We got ourselves a bond, Bernie. Nick. Rebound. Mitchum foul on 42 Gilbert. The 1979 NCAA basketball championship program. It's a memento you'll treasure. Exclusive information on the Final Four, tournament records, plus plenty of photos, features, much more contained in this collector's issue. Send a check or money order for $4 to NCAA Program, Box 1979, Lexington, Kentucky, 40594. Appreciating message furnished by the NCAA. I think that foul was on Watkins. Of course, Larry Bird gets that tough offensive rebounding position. Tough to keep him out of And Bird... Gives Indiana State the lead, 41-40. Looking for his 22nd point of his hand. He called it off. He knew it as soon as he released it. So with a minute 10, Watkins gives oh, he has the lead. No whistle. 42-41. First half, a great first half as Reed gives Indiana State the lead. Three in a row from outside 20 for Reed. As I told you earlier, he's an excellent shooter. He's the glue that keeps this team together. He sacrifices himself offensively. Everybody coming off that high screen by Aguirre, but nobody getting it inside yet. Garland with 28. Garland open. Bird rebounds. Indiana State has the lead. Can add two more to its total. They'll play for one shot, obviously. And they're going for one. That is the man to shoot it. Nope. Back to Bird. Great pass. Oh, what a play. Brad Miley. Good hole has to hurry. You've got to get it up, Garland. Get it up. And that's the end of the first half. At the intermission. Larry Bird and the Indiana State Sycamores. Bird leading the way with 23 points. Lead to Paul University. A great show by a great All-American and a marvelous 20 minutes of basketball. Indiana State leaves the court leading to Paul by three. With a lot of hoopla and publicity, the NCAA crowns their Division I basketball champion, but they won a lot of championships in other sports also. Let's take a moment now to salute our other NCAA champions. Football, Division I AA, Florida A&M. Division II, Eastern Illinois, Baldwin-Wallace champions, Division Three. In soccer, Divisions I, II, and Three, they are USF, Seattle Pacific, and Lock Haven State, respectively. Indoor track champions, Villanova. In water polo, Stanford. Colorado, the champions, Division I skiing. 
in cross country are three divisional champs, Texas, El Paso, Cal Poly, San Luis Obispo, and North Central. In wrestling, Division I, Iowa State wound up with a championship. Cal State Bakersfield took it for Division II, Trenton State for Division III. In swimming, Cal State Northridge and Johns Hopkins walk away with honors, while in basketball, Division II champions North Alabama and Division III people from North Park. We salute all of those champions. And speaking of champions, last night in Charlotte, North Carolina, there was a McDonald's High School All-America Classic played among a lot of blue chippers coming out of high school. It was an assemblage of some great talent. For highlights of that ball game, we get this report now from Larry Sacknell. Last night in Charlotte, the largest crowd to ever watch a prep game in North Carolina, 11,666, turned out to watch the college stars of tomorrow in the McDonald's All-American game. Some of the more highly publicized players were Dominic Wilkins, watching Magic Irvin Johnson there, 7-3 Ralph Sampson of Harrisonburg, Virginia, John Paxton of Kettering, Ohio, and Antoine Carr of Wichita, Kansas. Let's take a look at some of these players. East squad won at 106-105 in overtime. They've all got that outside shot. That's Horace Owens out of Philadelphia swishing it through. Dirk Minifield out of Lexington, Kentucky has decided to stay in that state, play his college ball at Kentucky. He's got that outside shot, doesn't he? Watch John Paxson. He's the brother of Dayton star Jim Paxson. He's going to go to Notre Dame, play for Digger Phelps. Isaiah Thomas likes to go to the hoop. The heck with that uh, outside shot. John Paxson to Ricky Ross to Tim Andre. All these guys know how to pass the ball around. Andre, by the way, is 6'11". He's also going to go to Notre Dame and play for Digger. Ralph Sampson, 7'3", highly recruited, the most highly recruited athlete in the country right now. He's number 33. He's devastating. He blocked 10 shots last night, had 11 rebounds, and I tell you, he can do it all underneath that hoop. He can even start the fast break for you. Watch this. He's going to get that outlet pass out to Dominic Wilkins, who's going to go in for that hoop, and nobody's going to stop him right there. Now, all of these guys like to slam dunk, and don't forget, they're only in high school. They're not your college stars yet or your pros. Look at that. They can go to that hoop and just slam it right through. Wilkins, Carr, Darren Day, they can all do it, and they do it pretty well, don't they? Now, Darren Day of the West Squad scored 22 points, and because of that, he was voted the most valuable player of that game, and for that, he received the John Wooden Award. As you are watching the stars of tomorrow, you'll be seeing him on college basketball and eventually in the pros. I'm Larry Sacknoff for NBC Sports. It's 45-42 at the half. Indiana State out in front of DePaul. This one close as expected. Two teams going for the right to meet Michigan State on Monday night. Larry Bird has 23 first half points, but DePaul countering it very well with good balance. For a look at the first half, let's go cross court. Dick Enberg, Al McGuire. Now we have a look. First um, unfinished business, Brian. Want to uh, say to Big House Games down there at Winston-Salem, he has more career victories than does Ray Meyer, although the statistics are broken down sometimes in divisions. We didn't mean to slight a great coach had a great pupil in Earl Monroe. Another unfinished business, we understand the Knicks will be here on Monday night of Indiana State well, win. Uh, the Reverend uh, had work to do tomorrow. It's Sunday, and uh, so they're going to come out if Indiana State wins for the finals. All right, so much for that. We saw an exciting offensive first half, very few mistakes, great shooting, three-point Indiana State lead, and Larry Bird continues to just be beyond description. Uh, he, he's, he's just so, so good. He makes everyone around him good. That's how you can tell a good ball player. He's unselfish. He has the whole game. If there's any weakness, it's maybe a little bit slow of foot, but I doubt he even has that. You know, there are five men in basketball history who have scored more points than Larry Bird and all of them have their name or some memento in the Hall of Fame in Springfield, Massachusetts. I think you're going to enjoy a flashback now of some of the great names enshrined. The Hall of Fame in Springfield, Massachusetts traces the history of the sport invented by Dr. James Naismith and includes memorabilia and film of the game's greatest players. Naismith was faced with the fact that 18 fellows didn't particularly like physical training, exercise by the numbers. They wanted to play a competitive game. There was there was no indoor competitive game at the time, so he decided he needed uh, a couple of boxes, about 18 inches square, and he asked the janitor to get a couple of those. The janitor didn't have them, but he had a couple of peach baskets. And 144 nations later, and, and uh, about 80 years, you have basketball. As the game developed, uh, it would be impossible to imagine how they did shoot. Probably they shot one hand. But we do know the coaches were convinced the best shot of all 
was a two-handed shot. Of course, Paul Arizon was the, considered one of the first great jump shooters. Joe Folks, out of Kentucky, was one of the most amazing scorers and the first man to score over 60 points in a game, unheard of in 1947. Now, there have been other great jump shooters, and present-day shooters are among the most uh, deadly shooters that you would find. Probably one of the great changes in the game of basketball is the fact that all of today's players are such great shooters. Seven men will be inducted into the Hall of Fame on April 30th, among them five coaches and a referee. The only player inducted this year will be Will Chamberlain, the historical NBA All-Star. Think of all of his records. Over 31,000 points scored. Over 30 points a game average. Played over 1,000 games in over 47,000 minutes and never fouled out of one game. Over 23,000 rebounds. And 55 in one game. And the 55 he got in one game was against his great rival, Bill Russell, also a Hall of Famer. Will Chamberlain certainly must be considered the greatest offensive player in the history of the game of basketball. Wilt's picture will join the others in the honor court. It's a gallery of greats in a game that's come a long way from what Dr. Naismith had in mind. We've got a good second half going, second ball game going, rather. Indiana State out in front of the ball, 45-42. Let's go back to Dick and the coach. Well, that's an understatement, Brian. A great first half of shooting. And, Coach, you look at those statistics. What was your first comment? Oh, my God. To shoot 75%, Indiana State hit 21 to 28. DePaul should be 12 points ahead with their shooting. They're shooting uh, 60%, 21 to 35. Nobody's in foul trouble. That's just going to make it a terrific game. The most anyone has is two. I don't think either coach is going to change their style. No, and he won't do something to stop Bird with 23 points? No, no, I think they're happy the way the game's going. The game was really a tie. It went up three points at the very end of the ball game. It looks to me like a white knuckler. Well, that's the kind of game that this tournament is famous for. It was not the case in the first game. Oh. The only white knuckles were those of the Penn players, coaches, and fans. It was all Michigan State. They've earned a berth in the finals. The first game was certainly not a white knuckle. The Michigan State Spartans came into this one looking to beat Pennsylvania, but nobody ever dreamed they'd do what they did to Penn. They rattled off nine unanswered points in the first half at one stretch, 19 at another stretch. And as for the Penn Quakers, well, not a lot was going right. They couldn't get the ball down in the hole. When they did come up with it, they managed to throw it away. And for Bob Weinauer on the sidelines, it was a long day for him and his Penn Quakers. The only anxious moment the Spartans had came when an injury occurred to Terry Donnelly. The Spartans playing their usual running game. Watch this one. Magic Johnson comes across, feeds off to Donnelly, but when he goes up, he loosed his legs off from under him, and the agony in his face tells the complete story. He sat out the rest of the half, but came back in the second half to play. By that time, Michigan State had it well salted away, thanks to Gregory Kelser. He tossed in 28 points. Michigan State was up 50 to 17 at the half. The only reason Penn made it respectable was because they tossed in 50 second-half points, Bobby Willis getting two of them right there. But the game was long since out of question. Irvin Johnson tossing in two of his 29 from the corner. Between them, Kelser and Johnson, 57 points. The final, Michigan State 101, Penn 67. The Spartans move on into Monday night's final. And that's the end of our Pro Keds basketball report. We'll be back right after this message. Sellout crowd of 15,000 fans on the campus of the University of Utah Special Event Center ready for the second half. First half shooting statistics were incredible as you can see 75% for Indiana State, 60% for DePaul and Larry Bird. What do you think he shot individually, Al? I think an unbelievable 83%. Uh, he just made another. He was 11 for 12, 92% the first half. He broke the calculator. That's Eight. the biggest lead of the game by either team. Five points, Indiana State. Garland off the mark and Bird rebounds. He had seven rebounds and five assists to go with his 23 points in the first half. I think if you're the ball, you're going to have to get that ball inside to Aguirre in the second half. They counted on the long-range bomb in the first half and went in, but they're not getting to the inside game. Missed the shot, but he was fouled, and that explains part of it all. 
Of course, it won't count as an attempt here. Here he is moving around constantly looking for offensive position. Watkins too late getting there. There's a beautiful soft touch inside. That was a basket right before this one. Third foul on Watkins. Bird now needs only 12 points to become the number five scorer in college basketball history. Top four, Keith Maravich, Freeman Williams, the big O after Robinson, the big E, Elvin Hayes, and Bird could be number five past Otis Bird's song today. He needs... Now just a handful of buckets. Big basket here for DePaul. They've got to get this one. Riley doing a big job on Aguirre. They're really pushing each other inside. I'm sure Ray Meyer wants to get it into the young freshman. He's got to be patient. There's Aguirre. Oh, a tough turnaround, 15 footer. 49-44. One minute gone, second half. That was the biggest basket for DePaul so far this game. But still, Al, they're not getting it in there easy. You know, they're making tough baskets. They'll create some turnovers for them. There goes Bird again off the low screen. They got a push in the back from Watkins, and that'll be his fourth foul. Curtis Watkins now saddled with four. I think Gary Garland got him, and here's where Ray Meyer's going to have to make a switch on defense. They'll put, they'll put Mitchum on Bird. Yeah, got to make this switch. See, Bird is so tough to handle because you try to deny him the ball. He steps out for the jumper. He moves in and post, then he comes over the screen. Just keeps moving. Oh. Right down the bottom of the hole, and that was shot downward by Alex Gilbert. He was about a half a foot above the rim to shut it down. Eight points for Gilbert. Now we're looking for Ray Meyer to call a timeout here if he can't get something started. The game getting away from him early in the second half. Indiana State with its biggest lead, seven points. He played less than two minutes. Aguirre. There it is. Mark Aguirre. He now has ten. He's trying to create some turnovers. They're picking up a little bit stronger up court now. They're in a one-two-two press, trap press, with Mott playing a, uh, Mitchell playing a one-man zone in the back. Reed. Miley. Oh, big pass. Brad Miley takes it to the hoop, and he has four. They shot 75% in the first half, and they haven't missed a shot in the second half. Garland, Bird, rebound. Garland was hitting that jumper in the first half. Not there, they're not getting into their offense at all. Here's Mitchum on Bird. Larry Bird, a phenomenal display. I've watched him a couple of times. It's unbelievable. He hits that shot like he hit a layup. There's the timeout. Timeout to ball. Larry Bird with 29 points has sparked the Sycamores into their biggest lead of the game. A nine-point advantage, 17 minutes left. Ray Meyer looking a bit more stern as he sees that Indiana State team dominate. They just can't be stopped. Well, what he said in the huddle most likely was not to lose his composure. Indiana State has to go into a drought zone. The way they've been playing offensively, it's a believe it or not quickly thing. You know what's amazed me? That nobody has played Larry Bird a box and one throughout this entire playoff series. He needs some help playing against him. That's only a second miss of this game. Bird is going after Bill Walton's final four record of 44 points. Watkins is short. And with playing just five men, DePaul, fatigue may be a factor. Shots are short. Nix. No car, no foul. Gilbert. Makes it 57 46. Courage by Watkinson. And a real good athletic ability on the part of Nix to be able to stop on the dime. You know, the ball, I've seen them down a few times. They don't lose their composure. Uh, they're going inside, and I think that's the smart move. Mitchum outside, can't hit. Garland goes inside and banks it home. He's a player. <laughs> He's not only a player. He's an outstanding player. You know, they haven't been able to turn the ball over in the backboard yet with a steal. That's something that was the real key to this ball game, and that's been handled well so far. Rebound taken off by Watkins. Three on one to Paul. Aguirre. Oh, steal. Boy, that should have been a foul, though. Reed got a piece of him at the same time. And who was that that went? Larry Bird. Larry Bird. He flew into the stands. 
he's okay. He's a pretty tough kid. I watched him try to handle him on a physical ball game uh, back in, in Cincinnati. He can handle that, too. Here you go, coming down. He, well, he got, got the ball. ball. He yeah, got he got the ball. ball. He had a little bit of the hand. There goes Burns with his stand. Indiana State might be in that drought I was talking about. You just can't stay hot for the whole game. Al, you owe me $5. You said if he hit another one, you were going to give me five. I heard him. I'm a believer. I'm a believer in Mitchell. Yeah, but pay me the five. That'll be a real story. 57 50, Indiana State. Played only four oh, minutes. nice. Mitchum with a block, but Bird is there again. Larry Bird with 31. He needs only six more to pass Bird's song and be number five all time. He's ambidextrous. He writes in each left hand and he shoots basketball and pull right hand. Mitchum again. Not there. Watkins. Well, he's battling now. He forgot the leg. Watkins and the foul is on Bird. Bird tried to influence on the call and he really hadn't blocked him off. I know he got there a little bit late on that one. Here he comes down the other end. Now watch him, constantly moving. People are leaving him. I don't understand when you've got a responsibility to guard him. You better stay with him, even if you've got to help out with somebody else, because he's going to be in position. One of his biggest assets, he goes to the offensive board, Bill. You said that earlier. Yeah, super. Gary Garland can connect. Gilbert high for the rebound. A great leaper. Well, he's a sky hook, that guy. Oh, uh, 50. Defensive move. Reed loses it out of bounds. One of the few turnovers in this game. Garland set that one up down the other end. Reed got by him. You can't fool him out the pool. Timeout, Indiana State. We played five minutes and five seconds of the second half. And the score, Sycamores, 59. Incredible as it may be with the shooting in the first half, both teams are shooting better in the second half. Indiana State, six for seven, DePaul, six for nine. Bob Heaton in the game, another very subtle but excellent substitution by Bill Hodges, wanting to keep fresh people out of there. Reed was wearing down. Foul on number 40, Brad Miley of Indiana State, his first. Mark Aguaya, right for a post position, is forcing himself too high. He has to settle in lower and catch Miley on his rear end. That is the official game statistic. Indiana State, 73 percent of the game. Lead by nine, 59-50. At halftime, the ball had seven rebounds because there were no rebounds. <laughs> There's Aguirre, he's in position. Ooh, wow, oh. by Gilbert. Gilbert. Great leaper, and he denied the two points by Aguirre. Boy, he's a high rise. I, you know, I don't know if we saw this one, but Aguirre used his elbow to knock two men down to get position. Here's one, two. Bird's down, and Miley's down. Look, great shot. Look how high. Can we show it again how high they are above the rim? They're playing this game above. And he was uh, in the second floor window when he reached out his hand, <laughs> deflected out of the way. And he's taken about 230 pounds. Watch this right here. Boom, down goes third, down goes Miley. Aguirre makes one of the two free throws. It's 59-51. Starting to pick up a little bit higher now, trying to force that backcourt turnover. Bird always there to help out. Garland deflected it out of bounds. That's where sometime later, if we can, I like to compare Larry Bird's pass to Magic Johnson's pass. Well, you've kind of vacillated a bit on that. You've uh, said they're both the best you've ever seen this year. Yep, but they um, have different conditions. Larry Bird right open at Bradshaw. <laughs> he does that one. Yeah, he missed the last one because of indecision. I just feel the momentum is swinging back to the pool. It's down to a six-point lead now. Oh, almost a backcourt violation, Bird. Well, you notice Bird hadn't touched the ball for a while. They're going to set him up. Here he comes, over the top, they missed him. Nix. 61-53, Carl Nix with 10. He wants to win, he wants his mother and father out here on Monday night. Oh, tough shot. A flyer between the leg dribble and hits an 18-footer. You sure he's only a freshman? Well, he takes up so much room with that big chest, it's hard to really get on it. He must have taken a postgraduate course in high school. Nixon's brave. Mitchum doing a pretty good job staying with Bird now, but Bird constantly on the move. There he is. And nice. Foul on Larry Bird, charging, and that's the third foul on Bird. 
good what a ball. pace in this game. Can these two teams maintain the pace? Now we see it right now. Bird constantly in motion, getting position. Mitchum doing a nice job. Gets over there on the baseline, draws the charge. Good play. Dick, they can maintain it. This is for all the marbles. This is the shot to go to Monday night, which is what it's all about. They'll dig down deep. Their energy and excitement sound they'll bring out. Ball trailing by six. Mitchum trailing by four. That's another five. <laughs> he is hitting that jump shot. 13 minutes left. Larry Bird coming back to help him bring it up the court now. Well, the jump shot was coming there. He was looking for it. What a pass. What a pass. Leroy Staley. You know, that was splendid. I think some guys get mesmerized when he touches the ball. The defense all looks at him and men cut open to the basket. Aguirre. Oh, look at that. Offensive foul on Aguirre of DePaul. Pushing off. Well, Miley's been really taking a shove in matching here. Now, here's Bird. He's just going to set up. Now, watch everybody kind of watching it. Bounce pass, beautifully thrown. Leroy Staley has been great off the bench. Lays it on in. He went back door that time. No foul and no call. No, I think it's a good no call right there. Body contact, but nothing major. Ball back and they're trailing by six. Indiana State with the ball. Twelve minutes left. Staley. Garland. That was a poor shot selection that time. That's two. Oh, what did he Oh, that was a choir coming from behind. He's done that in every tournament game. Come up with one. He ball. wants the ball. But he's short. Bird rebound. He's pushing a little bit, Al. He really wants the ball battle. What a leader for a freshman. 11 minutes and 40 seconds left. Usually ball players with big bodies play better in the fourth quarter because they maintain their strength. Timeout has been called by Indiana State. The Sycamores talk it over, leading by six, 11 and a half. I see. Indiana State with a lead by six and the ball. 11 minutes, 35 seconds left. <laughs> Boy, the defensive pressure to really pick it up. That's the thing that's amazing about those shooting statistics is they're playing it against tough defense. Garland got a piece of the wrist as he reached around. Gary Garland. Bird in the game. Here's an update, men. Tried 16 shots, made 14, three out of four free throws, 13 rebounds, and seven assists. That's a month for a lot of players. <laughs> I wonder if he ironed the towel. He's taking a little break over there. Now this again, as Bill Hodges been doing this, he wants his guys ready for the big struggle down the end. Heaton alone. Bob Heaton has his first basket. We talked about Heaton and Staley coming off the bench. Now Al, he's going to go ahead and rest his regulars. Ray Meyer doesn't have that advantage. He's been playing with five guys the whole way. And here in the United States, going to come back with a fresh two these five are used to it. They're the Iron Man. Yeah, but it's tough going up against fresh people. I agree with you, Bert. Watkins inside the score. Curtis Watkins has 14. They're keeping the pressure up court on him. They are, but Bill Hodges is, I think, comfortable to go ahead and trade baskets during this two-minute period. Turns it over, and there's a break for DePaul. They put you to sleep, DePaul, Billy. I'm telling you, I've seen him behind many times. And you kind of think you got them on the ropes, and all of a sudden, zip, they're like a cobra. Taking a look at the two coaches, I think both of them are getting what they want. Bill Hodges really has a lot of guts. Going ahead, taking Bird out of there now. Ten minutes to go, giving him a break. The ball and the foul is on 44. Staley and Aguirre helped the official with that call. He pointed out the man. Well, you've got to give the man room to come down. Now, here you go, Bill Hodges. Gave his men about a minute and a half. They're coming back in. We'll see Aguirre right here. Pushes off a little. You've got to give a man room to come down. That was a good call by the official. He came down on both feet and didn't move. He did not have room. That's right. 65-59, Indiana State. Oh, oh, another great block by Gilbert. Now, it's six, seven and a half. He's just trying to leap for a three scene all year. And has good timing. Doesn't foul in there. You know, he doesn't block needlessly. This big ass that he's mobile. 
Bradshaw inside, can't hit it. And it's out of bounds to Indiana State. East Orange is named the park at the uh, Bradshaw and Garland. That's a very nice gesture to the city council. You know, because all four players grow up in park. Bird will bring it down. Now we got Watkins back on him again. I think that just happened by accident. And he's got the foul problem. You got to get off of him. Reed misses Mitchum rebound. The ball out the run. Watkins, he likes the baseline. And DePaul has turned a bit cold here in this run after pulling within six. They're trying to get it back too quick. Yeah. They're trying to get back to their offense. Curtis got to settle down a little bit. Let Garland give it a try. And just on cue, Raymeyer got out both hands. Palm down said, hey, take it easy. And there's a turnover the other way. Now, Bird was mad at himself right there. He thought he had the angle on the pass. It wasn't available. Okay, we're coming down the stretch. We just broke the 10-minute mark. 45 left. The winner meets Michigan State. Mitchum, he's short. Everyone seems to be short. Miley comes up with a loose ball. I think they're a little tired. Right before Mitchum took that shot, he was bending over, holding his pants, really trying to get his breath. The ball, trailing by six, has had three straight opportunities if they hit those three. Oh, what a catch! What a catch! Drops in another. What a touch. Oh, that catch was incredible there. And there are birds all over the lot. Aguirre can't hit. And leading by eight, Indiana State has the ball again. Well, I think Ray needs to give him a rest timeout right now. They're really tired. I agree with you. They've got to get the ball into Gary Garland's hands. Three. Four. Can't hit. Oh, there's a foul. Aguirre for Garland. Three on two to Bradshaw. Oh, what a drive by Clyde Bradshaw. Plus the pass. Uh, oh, oh. Baseline violation against Indiana State. Here we go. See Ray Meyer hollering at him. Here's Larry Bird constantly moving. Boy, what it must be to try to defend that guy. Look at the hand. Catches the ball. Gets in position. Squares up to the basket and makes the shot. Incredible play. There's a great story about Bob King, his former coach. You know, King was the coach at the start of the year. Bill Hodges wasn't named the official coach till February. There's a lot of love yet between this Sycamore team and Bob King, the veteran coach. Bob Heaton tells the story to Billy Packer. In the part of your ball club in regard to Coach King and the fact that you fellas mostly were recruited there to play for him, and uh, now he's on the sideline, but watching very closely. Yeah, at the beginning of the year, we dedicated this season to him. And uh, I know at the you know very first of the season we were just had tears in our eyes you know seeing him uh, up in the stands uh, and you know we we really work hard not just for Coach Hodges but especially for Coach King and uh, you know he's here with us today and and throughout the tournament and uh, you know we're we're working just as hard for him as we are you know for Indiana State University and Coach Hodges. Bob King suffering a heart attack and then a brain aneurysm and a subsequent operation. And now is just the athletic director at Indiana State, but a great affection with his team. You know, if you were a Hollywood scriptwriter, you'd be cutting emotion a lot of ways. How do you go for the veteran DePaul coach Meyer, the King Hodges combination, Indiana State, and the winner will get the Spartans Monday night at nine o'clock. Gentlemen, Charlie Scott hit 16 field goals for North Carolina against Drake in 69. That is the NCAA semifinal game record. Larry Bird needs just one more to tie. Go man to man out of bounds now. They've gotten by with it twice. Oh, a travel by Mitchum. Costly turnover to Paul, trailing by six. That was a big turnover. Ray Meyer really upset with that one. And here's Bird coming back, meeting the ball. Hey, if you fellas have trouble getting it up, I'll take it. And now they have a wire on it. Traveling Bird. That wasn't Bird didn't a think so. That was not a travel. I tell you, he has such a great pump fake. I've seen that called on him three games in a row. He comes to the jump stop and pump fake. They call it almost every time, and I think it's a good play. Well, if they call on him, it should stop. Here it is. There he comes. Now watch it. He didn't You're want. Right. right. He doesn't drag. He does not drag the foot. And look at how he looks back at the official. The ball needs a basket to cut the lead to four. It's Aguirre hitting under heavy pressure. Oh, you got 763. 
He is a tough kid. Bird. Yeah, that great passing instinct. What a man to have the ball under pressure. Well, he has good vision. He sees the whole court. Oh, there it is. That. Nicks inside. Can't hit it. And here comes DePaul, trailing by four. They've cut Indiana State's lead down from 11. Garland. A goal-tending. A two-point game. DePaul comes back. He's got to get the ball. He's all in pass, especially going down the stretch. Here he is taking the ball all the way in. Good call by the official. Definitely a goal ten had already hit off the board. Now we start getting the ball to Larry Bird. Uh, he's going to want it. Here it is. 22 footer. <laughs> Unbelievable. He's going to want that ball. And what's happened to him? He's bringing the ball up the court so they haven't had a chance to get him in offensive position. He has missed two points, put Bird in that exclusive top five all time. Foul on Gilbert, his second. Neither team in the one and one yet. That's Indiana State. Fifth team foul, but four against the ball. Larry Bird. That's a very important statistic right now. Who gets to the one and one first? Make that six team fouls on Indiana State for DePaul. I'll be in it the next time down. Here's that man to man again out of bounds. Watkins scores 69 67. Watkins has 16. Well, I've said all year, Billy, you just can't play the baseline out of bounds man to man. It's impossible. The double team and read now. You know, Mitchum is doing a nice job on Bird. That's up. Bird. Mitchum. Saved by Watkins. Mitchum with the defense. DePaul looking for a pass. Deflected. That was Nick. Ooh, a quick hand by Garland that time. Try to return the turnover. 6.40 left. Setting up a new offensive structure right here to clear it out. Larry Bird on this side all by his own, trying to get the ball down low. Nick. Carl Nick. Mitchum rebounds, oh. Nick steals it, Mitchum blocks, and Bird takes it away. Oh. Beautiful play. Gilbert, oh, oh great basketball. Great college basketball. Let's see that again. That was outstanding. You know, you can't show a replay because there's a good play coming right up right after it. Super. 71 to 67. It's a shame one of these teams have to lose. I felt the same way about the Arkansas game, Al. You hated to see Sidney Moncrief have to bow out. Superman, Sidney. It's Sidney Mark Aguirre. He scores 71-69. Mark Aguirre at 17. Great balance. Watkins, 18. Aguirre, 17. Garland, 16. Mitchum asked Ray Meyer to come out, and he said, no, just hang in there. <laughs> Boy, he's exhausted. <laughs> Bird alone emotionally must Make you feel... Uh, well, he's like leaning on Larry Bird. Nix can't hit, and DePaul has a chance to tie. The clock is very important right here. DePaul could use this basket. I don't know if it's not a bad idea for them to hold the ball a little bit. Aguirre ties oh. it up. They're Mark holding Aguirre, the ball. 71 apiece. They've made up 11 points. There's Margaret Mary. She never closed. Oh, a bad pass. pass. Garland, DePaul takes the lead, 73-71. Bill Hodges hasn't called the timeout. I think he wants to keep the pressure on, but it's been really tough for him. Rebound Aguirre, the freshman, taking over with four and a half minutes left. Ray will call a timeout and go to a spread offense. Timeout to Paul. And now we'll see the strategy employed by McGuire. His team has come from behind. 11 points down. They lead by two, and there's four and a half minutes remaining. Line and get your free trial today. And for a while, it appeared it would be the bird against Magic Monday night. But the 11-point Indiana State lead has melted away under fierce defensive pressure from DePaul. The Demons now are in front by two, and 
DePaul has the ball. Now, Indiana State had everything going its way. Now, how do you analyze the last yeah, seven, eight minutes? In, in basketball, Dick, you can only keep going for so long. You've got to end up with a drought, and then the other team starts moving. That's where momentum comes. to keep swinging back and forth. I could feel momentum swinging to DePaul uh, about four or five minutes ago, and, and I you said it. it. Yeah. And um, so now, now it's a tight ball game. I think they will uh, spread it out and try to get to the one and one. There's a lifetime left, obviously, four minutes and 20 seconds. And of course, he's in pretty good foul shape because his team only has four fouls. And Indiana State is sitting on six, so the fouls from now on against the ball will take the Demons to the line. And a good opportunity for fellows in the front court to rest. And Paul did this very well against UCLA and came up with a lot of layups. Uh, they're going to turn the ball over. They can't do it this long. They either have to pick up a foul or turn the ball over. They're looking to isolate one and one. They'd like to get Garland on the side, one and one, and go around Bob Heap. They are. Oh, they kicked it out. They, oh, what a hustle. Out of bounds to Indiana State. You can't hold the ball that long, Dick. There's too much time left in the game. They have to go for the shot. And here's Bill Hodges coming back in with his offensive players, coming in with Steve Green. Green, the sophomore, made some clutch shots. Sent in by the 36 year old head coach of the Sycamores in his first season. Named the coach of the year. What a dream story that is. And Dick, Al was talking about drafts. I think another factor for Indiana State was the fact that they had to use Bird to bring the ball up the court, which took him out of the offensive area during that big that big run by DePaul. Now he's back down in there. Good point. Now Bird is where he likes to be. Yeah, but DePaul's in the zone now. In Dick, zone. Excuse me, they're in a 2-3. Oh, oh, man. Tie it at 73. What a beautiful assist by Larry Bird. I still think, Al, the boxing one is something to be thinking about against them because he's going to have a lot of help in that. If that comes, we'll come after a timeout. McGuire way off the mark. That's Bob Heaton with a rebound, and now it shifts to Indiana State. We're getting very close to the chess game. Let's see what Indiana State does. I think they ought to keep getting that ball in Bird's hands. Forget about holding it. The ball changed something. their defense again. They went to man to man. Bird's going to try to post up Mitchell. Watch him come out and pick Mitchell. It's a set play right here. They move Bird in low. 240 left. Terre Haute against Chicago. How about their high school teams in the finals tonight also? That's Having a pretty good year down there at Terre Haute. Well, the Bird's wings spread very wide. And now, as opposed to holding the ball here, they're running their offense, looking for the shot. They're not looking to hold it. Uh, DePaul is toughing off, trying to block up the middle. He'll put it up. Knicks can't hit. Uh, no. Mitchum, who has been a terror on the defensive boards. He's played an outstanding game. I think we've overlooked his total play today. Paul Nix had the shot. It just didn't Oh, go almost threw it out of bounds. Watkins had his back to the ball. Someone yelled. He turned and caught the pass. He just caught the ball. That's very important time. Sports tie out there. Got to remember, neither team in the one and one. So it's a good idea to follow, man, if he's beating you to the basket because they're only going to get it out of bounds. Now, Indiana State is Philly. No, it's six and four. Yeah, because the next one's one and okay, one. Okay, seven. Foul against... Oh, there it Nix. is. Nix commits the foul. It's only his third. And it will send the ball to the line. One on one. One on one. Look right up. You know, there have been shots of hockey players' faces and all the stitches. Look at the years. Look at the wins. Look at the losses in that face. Ray Meyer. Tough man, but a good man. Great competitor. The years I played against him, we really had great battles. Back and forth. Gary Garland to break the tie, one and one. He's the man they want there. Starting with scrum on that banjo. That's the assistant to Bayer, Ken Cerubi. Ooh, they got only one. They've got some real fine fouls. Did you see Larry Bird pass the ball off and say, come on, let's go get it. There goes your overtime, they're on an odd number. Oh, what a pass. Foul. Let's see if he's going to get two. Aguirre got the foul. Mark Aguirre, and for the freshman, that's his fourth. Well, there's no basket, so he won't be shooting it at all. 
They said it wasn't a basket. Here we go. Beautiful pass. Molly had it, just kind of lost it a little bit going up. Kept it active. Goes up again. Here's Bird coming in. Powers the rebound. They'll get it out of bounds. And that's the 15 foul. So they've got one more to go after this for one and one. The ball's playing a 3 2 zone out of bounds underneath. Had to clear the ball out high. Okay, good ball. See the clock, time remaining, a tie game has been broken on Garland's free throw, 74, 73 to fall. A foul, Mitchum holding Bird away from the ball, no shots on this one. That's okay, it. now the next one will be one and one. What was it? You see Ray Meyer up there a little upset with that foul because you don't want to make an unnecessary one. That was a big advantage not to be in a one and one. And Mitchum is the third to ball player settled with four fouls, so that's a story too. Right down to the wire. Got to throw it out high. That's it. They're in that zone, but they know where Bird is. They're doing a good job concentrating on Bird when he touches the ball. Plenty of time left. The, the winner gets Michigan State. Oh, he scores! Indiana State leads by one with 48 seconds left. Wow, that was so bad. Wow. Got to call timeout. They got to call timeout, the ball. All right. Ray Meyer hurts you. Now that's Ray Meyer's son with the glasses to our right. Ken Sarubi, Joe Meyer, who's a brilliant basketball tactician. There's a lot of rumors that he might replace his father at DePaul, but you heard, Ray, before the game, he has no designs on retiring. He's not leaving until he's 70. That's the requirement in the Vincentian school there. Ray, uh, the son has never called him father. He always calls him coach. Margaret Mary, the, the wife right there, also calls him coach. You mean that after 40 years of marriage, when they hug each other, give each other a kiss goodnight, she says, good night, coach? And they're going to be married 40 years this May 27th. That's marvelous. She's a lovely lady. Yeah, now, we've that got a quartet of coaches have talked it over. Each of you take your shot at it, Billy. What do you think they're saying? Then we'll give Al his chance. Well, obviously, I think if I'm, uh, if I'm Ray Meyer, I want to get the ball inside to Aguirre. Uh, if he does, all the pressure's on the defense, and the kid wants the ball. Even though he's a freshman, I like his guts on the inside. And, of course, if, if you're down here and you're Indiana State, you want to go ahead and get that ball to Larry Bird and let him create. What I say they're talking about over the Indiana State huddle, they're saying, all right, there's 36 seconds left. If the ball scores, let's call an immediate timeout. Let's come out into a 2-3 zone. I don't know if they'll do it or not. Make him shoot from the outside. Overplay Garland. I say that what Ray is saying right here, we got plenty of time left. Let's look for the good shot. Let's take the shot. If we, if we can't get it, we'll call another timeout with about 15 seconds to go. You know, I've always wanted to ask someone this question. Ask it on the air. 36 seconds to go. You're down by one, but you have the ball. Some would say you'd rather have the ball get the last shot. Others would say, well, I'd rather have that little one-point lead, the other team with the ball. What would you rather I'd have? rather have the lead. Percentages in your advantage. Even though the other guys have the ball. Yeah. Because you case, don't score over 50% of your shots in the game. All right. In that Normally. Case, Indiana State's in the catbird seat, but delicately so. 36 seconds. Will they go for the last shot? We'll see in a moment. They're in the zone. No, they're not. They're man to man. They played man to man the whole game. Had never touched. Boy, they're going to hold it down to about 15. They call another time. Gary Garland. Boy, this is dangerous. Right man got the ball and he can put it in Garland's hand. Okay, I think they got to call another timeout. Well, they're going for the win. Oh, one shot. Ben Allen. Allen. You're going to know when the holds. You're going to know when the fold. Aguirre. Here it goes. The ball. Over. Over. Congratulations. Oh, there's one second left. Why did he shoot one the ball? Left. Why did he it's shoot the over. ball? It's not over. And there's one second left. Well, they're calling, a, they're calling an intentional foul. It'll be a two-shot foul. It appears Indiana State has earned its ticket to that final game in a perfect year, but it's not over. Ray Meyer has gone down to congratulate Bill Hodges on the far sidelines. A concession speech <laughs> by Meyer, and Hodges says, hey, wait, it wait till I win it. Yeah, he said it's not over yet. Leroy Staley was grabbed, and that's why there's a two-shot foul. 
Ray say is throw it down there. I can't believe they wouldn't call a timeout, Al. Well, they're nervous. They're young. That's why they're in college. It's not a, they're not professional. But I, uh, every hand's a winner and every hand's a loser. That was some gamble they took. If he misses the shot, the clock starts not when it hits the rim, but when it touches the player in play. No, when it hits no, the rim, Dick, it, it hits the rim. rim. Yeah. But if it doesn't hit the rim, it doesn't start. It's all she wrote. The game's over. Okay. Well, if he makes it, they can call time. And have... I, I think it'd be a smart oh. move to get the players from Indiana State out of there so they don't push him an rebound. He should miss the shot on purpose, Billy. Yeah, but he might miss the whole rim. Then he, he, should get, he should miss it on purpose. He didn't. That's a mistake. Time out. They did call time. Now they have a final chance to tie the game. That's a mistake. Now, there's a second left on the clock. That means there's more than a second. Okay? Possibly. There could be a second and a half, a second and three fourths. What they'll do now, go back to the Olympic game many years ago in Munich, was it? Where they throw the long pass and you go back to us in the semifinals against Charles of North Carolina when Butch Lee threw the ball down to, I forget the guy's name. How about the aircraft? Who's my carrier? man? Jerome Whitehead. Jerome Whitehead. 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 The guy that made me famous. I forgot him. <laughs> <laughs> How I remember my good friends. <laughs> Indiana State, with one second remaining, has a two-point lead. The desperation throw will be delivered by Garland. He has four teammates down court. What they should do is put a man on Garland, a tall man. Great coaching. They're putting Gilbert there. He'll jump will force Garland to throw the ball higher, which allows the defense down court to adjust to the ball. There it is. There it goes. Oh, good play. And Indiana State has won it. The Sycamores are 30. It'll be that dream matchup. Urban Johnson of Michigan State, Larry Bird of Indiana State on Monday night. And the most valuable player, Larry Bird, Indiana State, was the winning up $1,000 to the Indiana State University in the name of their great All-American Larry Bird. We have seen two brilliant athletes at their best today. Bird of the Sycamores, Urban Magic Johnson of Michigan State, and we'll see them again. Is that a basketball fan's delight? Monday night at 9 for the national title. And we'll be back to talk to both winning and losing coaches. Our final, Indiana State 76, DePaul 74, a very happy couple, Coach Bill Rogers and his wife, Connie. Last week, Arkansas by one, today by two. Don't you do anything easy? Well, I thought we were going to do it easy, but, uh, you know, Ray just coached a heck of a game. They forced us into some things that uh, we don't normally do. And, uh, you know, it, it really it was tough at the end, a heck of a ball game. There was a period there with about eight minutes to go, 65-59, when it seems both teams lost their concentration, turned it over, up, and back. Was that the case, or was everybody getting a little cautious? Called fatigue, I believe, Brian. <laughs> uh, I think we were, we were tired. Uh, I know they were tired. They went with five men, and, you know, that's what causes lack of concentration. I know the coach appreciated the effort over there, Billy. We well, you know Mitchum asked to come out of the ball game one time, and Ray just said, stay out there, you got to gut it out. One of the things, Bill, that I was interested in is the last shot when you had the timeout. Did you think they were going to go into a Guire down low? Well, I thought they would post him up, but, you know, they use that four corner so much. It's also a heck of a, an idea to give the ball to Garland and let him try to score because, you know, he's taking it in. He's a great foul shooter. Uh, we just didn't want to foul. Uh, I'll tell you, when they got a one-point lead on us with a minute and a half to go, I knew they were going to the four corner. We're pretty good against the four corner. Connie saved one more kiss for the guy. You said a kiss for every game. Bill and Connie Hodges, congratulations. Let's go cross court. Dick Enberg has Coach Raymeyer. It spells out the class of this man that he's waited to talk to us in defeat as he was in victory against UCLA last week. Coach to coach, what would you like to ask Ray? Ray, I'd like to know, with 35 seconds left in the game, you were down by one point. What did you tell your ball players? I told our ball players to get it inside, but don't wait till the last shot. Get it up, and if we have, if we miss it, we want to foul uh, Miley or whatever. It's a 27 percent free Gilbert. throw. Gilbert. 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 Yeah. We wanted to foul him right away. We waited too long for the shot, and we took a four shot. Gary had one from the free throw line yeah. and passed it up. I thought Gary was going to take that. That right was his shot. Yeah. yeah. We made a couple of mistakes with the three men out. We threw the ball away once and uh, go back and. Hey, but your kids made a great. Margaret, Mary, yeah. Get Margaret in here. <laughs> uh, your, but your kids showed such remarkable poise. 
Coach, you, you were down by 11 to a great basketball team, and you came back and, and had victory almost there. Well, Dick, basketball, like every team sport, is a game of mistakes. We made a couple of mistakes at the wrong time. And Indiana State's a very fine ball club. They shot very well. Uh, Despite, no matter how we try to tell our boys not to turn their heads when Bird gets the ball, they still do it. And we give them a little layup and a, a little free throw here and there. But I'm proud of our boys. They played well. They never, they never quit. They always try to come back. Thank you, Ray, for joining us. Congratulations on a great year and great basketball. We're going to go now to Brian Gumbel and Larry Bird. Okay, Dick Ember, thank you very much. Billy Packer, I know you want one quick question with the big guy. Well, Larry, super ball game. Magic before the game said he loves to watch you play because you come up with things he never saw before. How about your chance to play against them? Well, I know it's going to be a great game. I just hope we don't get blown out like Ken uh, did. I just want to go out. We're here now, and you never did say we get here, so we're going to do it. <laughs> well, you really show me up. Great game, all right. Michigan State, Indiana State, Monday night. Let's go back to Dick Ember. Now, the final score, Indiana State defeats DePaul by...